we going live. Yeah, yo, what's up? This is your boy Rob Glow. This is the Lost Ones Podcast. How y'all doing? What's up with y'all? Um, when you hear this, this will be Saturday morning. Okay. So it's just twelve forty three midnight. Uh I just got off work not so long ago. Putting in the hours, you feel me? How y'all doing? What's up with y'all? Since the last time we talked, it's a bunch of uh it's a bunch of things I want to talk about in this episode. Um, you know, especially with the NBA, what's going on. Um, as you guys know, Anthony Davis is out a couple of weeks with a calf strain. So the Lakers are trying to um, stay afloat, stay ahead of the top Western Conference. Even though teams like the Jazz, teams like the Clippers, um, the Nuggets are teams that's deep, that have chemistry. They've been with each other for multiple years now. Um, so, but they're getting ahead in the standings in the West Conference. Um, my thing is, with if the Lakers can keep at the top five in the West, also with LeBron, um, not only staggering his minutes, but him playing at an elite level, MVP level, um, the Lakers can do just fine in the time that they're not going to have Anthony Davis. Um I wonder if you guys seen the All Star ballots and the who's been named starters um, on both sides. In the East, it's going to be Giannis, KD, Kyrie, Bradley Beal, and I think Vujicic from not Vujicic, dude, the center from the Magic. I forgot his name, guys. I'm sorry. Nikola Vujicic. Yeah, that's how you say it. If I'm wrong, let me know. In the West, there's um, Nicole Jokic. Oh, Joel Embiid is the center. Joel Embiid is the... Joel Embiid, Giannis Antetokounmpo, KD, Kyrie, and Bradley Bill. In the West, there's Nicole Jokic, LeBron James, Kawhi Leonard, Stephen Curry, and Luka Doncic. Now, a lot of people um, felt that Damian Lillard deserved that notch over Doncic's considering the fact that um, Dame, he's in the MVP conversation and the fact that the Portland Trail Blazers have a better record with uh, a better record than the Dallas Mavericks at the moment. Um, how I feel about that? I feel as if, if you wanted to give it to Dame, I'm not mad at that. Dame deserves a starting notch. Um, Luka Doncic has a whole country riding for him. So it's kind of like, uh, I, I think that he was second in in media votes. No, I feel like he was third in media votes and Dame was two. But in fans, I think that Dame was third and Luka was first. So it, it gets tricky on that. I mean, I think they the tiebreaker was um, the fan voting. You know, the fan voting is tricky. You know, you might get dudes who's into that all-star game. Who they shouldn't be because of the fans. You know, fans make up 50%. Um, players and media make up the other 50%. So, it gets tricky. Um, the Western Conference, they have Nicole Jokic. I've already said this already. Who I think will win that game? The East. Hands down, more versatile players, better defense, better shooting. Yeah, KD, Kyrie, Bradley Beal, Joel can step outside. Yeah. Um, In the paint, formidable dominance with Giannis and Joel. I love LeBron, but LeBron can't guard Joel Embiid and the uh, – and Joel and Giannis Antetokounmpo, he just can't. And Nikola Jokic isn't going to guard neither one of them either. So I'm going to say it's going to be lack of basical defense by a stretch of imagination. Um, I want to get to like a nitty, real nitty gritty thing. What's going on with you guys right now? As you guys know, it was a big snowstorm that hit Texas. I think it was Colorado City, Texas. And, you know, a lot of people are struck without power. Um, 
food, water, and essential needs that we need to survive. Um, <clears throat> my condolences and my prayers go out to all those people who are struggling right now who are trying to, you know, just survive off of natural instincts. And, you know, it's really tough out here, especially when your local government is abandoning, abandoning those same people that they're paying for. You feel me? You know, um, the mayor of Colorado City, Texas, um, Tim Boyd. I don't know if you guys seen what he said on Facebook just a couple of days ago. More of the story of what he said, uh, only the strong will survive. The government doesn't owe you anything. Um, stop relying on those said officials to bail you out. Only the strong will survive and the weak will perish. You know, that's, you know, it's a sick white um, elitist only looking out for their own. Don't really care about, you know, the other people, the working people, those who go out and make a living every single day. You know, indigenous people, colored people, where however you want to slice and dice it. But, you know, but on just a moral level, how dare you, you know, those people pay taxes just for you to have a job and make a living for yourself and your family. How are you going to abandon those people when the time of need off of a natural disaster? Not so much of a natural disaster, but they don't get snow. They don't get extreme weather like we do in Cleveland. Like, does no, they don't. So the fact of the matter is, it's a real disaster going on, and those those people need help to just to sort of fucking vibe, just to survive. And you're just, you know, that's how they feel about us, man. And that's the fucked up part about it. As you get older, you see a lot about politics, how the game is played, and how, you know, the rich protect the rich, and it's really fuck everybody else. The elite protect the one percent, protect the one percent. It's it's really, it's frightening, man. It is. It is. You know, and they and the people who you know decide they want to loot and go to stores, you know, taking things, breaking into things. You can't, you can't really blame those people. They need these things to survive. Essential human needs that you know, it's little babies, little kids, toddlers getting frozen to death in those extreme snowstorms. Newborns are literally being frozen to death, killed being killed by a cop or carbon mon uh, monoxide. Um, probably not carbon monoxide, let me scratch that. Just for dying in cars, sleeping in cars for long periods of time because there's no heat in, the, in their houses. What are they supposed to do? You know what I'm saying? They, they bail out all these big corporations and companies that's you know, killing our community slowly but surely, but you won't bail out the people? It says a lot about the United States. It says a, it says enough to really say that um, our country is nothing but a designed third world country. It's everybody for themselves, really. You know, the United States really paint a picture that, you know, we're the ultimate destination. You know, we all we all stand for a purpose, and we all have we all come together. But in reality. This country don't give a shit about its people. And time and time again, um, they showed us this. Blatantly in our faces, whether we want to admit it or not, whether we've been blind to the fact of what they've been doing to us for so many years. You know, it's really heartbreaking. You know, I can only just imagine if I was in those situations, I had to survive like that. You know, I've been blessed to live in the environment and situation where, you know, Cleveland only gets wild, wild winters and very, very hot summers. Other than that, we don't really have, we just have after effects of natural disasters that's going on. Like outskirts, like if somewhere having a tornado or a hurricane, we'll, we'll get like little after effects of it, but nothing to the point where people have to evacuate from their homes. Their homes are getting flooded. You know, like, I've never been in those situations, you know. I'm blessed to say that. So, you know, my heart and prayers are going out to 
all those people in Texas. <sighs> yeah, it's 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 a really shitty time right now, and you know a lot of people feel like changing administrations is going to do any justice or any better when in reality it doesn't really matter man a lot of these things a lot of things we've been grow up we grew up um that we were taught a lot of these things aren't true one a lot of these things don't matter you know and a, and a lot of things we've been blind to see like the important picture you know you know we've been beating to our heads that we should work hard you know work hard work hard you know and a lot of people didn't grow, know the fact of how to work smarter, you know, how to work and not put so much stress on your body or your mind. You know, history, a lot of people are either blind, haven't been taught, or they've been taught all the lies, you know, that our country's been giving to us for a lot of these years. And it's crazy, you know, I'm 24, I'm going to be 25 this year, you know, Started to see a change in the world. I've been seeing changes, but now it's like it's something that's going on, and you know, the times that we're living in now is going to affect um, next five, ten years. So I'm doing what I need to do and put myself in the position and to make sure me and my future clan will be straight. I'll have nothing to worry about. I'm not going to depend on, you know anyone to do nothing for me I want to get that you know I know a lot of people that's like the same way it's crazy man and I see why people a lot of people say that it's kind of hard um, you know bringing a, a child into this world you know especially when you tell them everything about their people you know their family history you know how what how what times we're living in how others see you just from a human aspect a business aspect you know it's it's a lot man it's a lot learning for yourself it's a lot learning for yourself so then just imagine you have to teach that same information to your children you know i want to i want to be very specific on telling my children you know what i'm just not learning within the last five to six years Five or six years. Shout out to, hold on guys, I'm gonna show you guys when I'm rolling up in this episode. 1882, Honey Berry. You feel me? Shout out. You know, Cleveland got a lot of talent, y'all. I want to start, not even fucking just want to start. I want to, you know, show what my city have to offer on all aspects. I want to show the, the great side, you know, our downtown, our businesses, our brands, what people are doing, you know. Our rap scene, our, our nightlife, just our city as a whole. We are a great city, man. But a lot of things, a lot of trials, a lot of uh, tribulations go into, you know, why we don't get that coverage and why we don't, we don't have a spotlight. <clears throat> and let me tell you, um, once we have people get on in our city, they like to take their upcomings and go somewhere else and build and you know help that other city create and receive dividends and all these other things basically what i'm trying to say is people leave cleveland and go somewhere else and help somewhere else build you know and, and i feel that <clears throat> you know just for example you know we had a lot of rappers to blow up in cleveland uh, within the last 5 10 15 years even going back to bone thugs and harmony you feel me? Um, we have to do a better job on <clears throat> helping each other get on. Uh, 
putting other people in positions to, you know, give them a spotlight or voice, something. You know, once you get somebody in position, they don't, they spread the wealth to their immediate people, but it's never to like a whole brand of people they're putting on, you know, and get it. A lot of people in the city don't rock with different parts of the city. So granted, they're only going to do it in their immediate communities. But you see cities like the rap scene right now, what's going on? Detroit got on lock. The whole state of fucking Michigan got on lock. The Flint niggas, them Detroit niggas. And any part of fucking Michigan hottest niggas in, on the rap scene, they're there. You know what I'm saying? Atlanta had a scene with Migos, the whole QC lab, label, Lil Baby, um, Gucci, Jeezy, um, shit, Outkast. The list goes on and on. Future. Um, Chicago, Chief Sosa, Dirk, Bibby, Herb, Polo, uh, Cowboy, Kanye West, Twister, R. Kelly, the list go on and on. You know what I'm saying? When you come to Cleveland, you know, we got, we got, we got niggas like Doughboy. We got niggas like Q Money when he was out, Cray, um, them are the hottest nick. Them are really the hottest rappers, like on a m mainstream. I'm not just talking about popularity and how good they are as a rapper. I'm just talking about on the mainstream level. Like they are the only three niggas, for real. Q Money locked up. Cray just got out of jail. He haven't really made it. Even though I fuck with Cray, I love all this nigga music. Uh, the two songs he put out when he got out of jail. The one he just released, I fuck with it. The first one, he it's it's, it's mixed reviews. So he hasn't dropped a, a radio hit since he's been out of jail. Doughboy got, you know, he got bangers. He got some solid tapes, but it's not like he's bringing anybody from Cleveland. Cray, he got his, his LTV niggas, and they doing cool in their hoods, but nobody, no, nobody blew yet. And Q Money, he only came out with some bangers. He came out with a tape and some, and some cuts, but... He lock, he got locked up before he would even even got the chance to experience his glow or just his rise to stardom. So I feel like niggas in the city gotta do better with you know. I know niggas be beefing. It yeah. So that's that shit a lot of times. You know niggas don't fuck with certain parts of the city and niggas got you know certain beef whatever whatever the case may be. You know and you and more times than. Yeah, I know y'all see this shit sh coming along, you know. <laughs> yeah, but and is it, it takes way more just to say yeah, y'all drop the beef, for, just you know, get some money, you know, a lot of shit go on into that. But you no, know, we gotta start somewhere. Even when I see my nigga shots and my nigga mo shots, um, uh, doing good, great on the great on the camera side. My nigga is the hottest cameraman video coordinator in the city hands down you know we gotta get these niggas more props and more recognition we gotta give a lot of these clothing brands niggas got in the city uh shout out to my cuz too raw too real you know what i'm saying we gotta give these brands more recognition more light we can be we can really become one of the best cities to come to and the best cities to have a lot of creatives a lot of creators you know, a lot of things we can offer, you know, just, you know, we got a hell of great barbers. We got a lot of great barbers in the city, man. Shout out to my nigga Ernie. He be blessing. Ernie blends. Feel me? But it's a lot of things. Ooh, we going dark. Zero three. I'll give you two seconds, y'all. technical difficulties sorry <laughs> but where where was i um yeah just, just more of the story i feel like cleveland as a whole we need to do better on you know get, getting everybody involved and and coming together and trying to find a medium ground so everybody can get a 
get income, everybody making money with each other. It ain't no shady business. There ain't no, you know, because, you know, once the motherfuckers start getting money, no money, no problems. So. Shit. My MVP this season, if they don't give it to Bron, give it to my nigga Joel and B. I've been telling y'all for like four or five years. And you know what? My LeBron 555 five, five agenda. Shout out to my nigga Kings, bruh, on Twitter. Uh, He got his 555 five, five agenda. Five MVPs, five uh, championships, five finals MVP for LeBron. And I'm right along with that. I want that to happen. I really do. Just to shut up the, the damn Michael Jordan comparisons. Because once LeBron get five and six, I really believe that there shouldn't be a conversation with who's who's the greatest player between LeBron and Jordan. Honestly. Honestly. Because it's, it, it got to be more just about accomplishments. Because LeBron got just as much accomplishments, maybe even more than Jordan if he gets to that point. At that point, he'll probably be top two points all time. He's top 10 in assists. You feel me? He's the all-time points in playoff history. How many times he's had a triple-double average in the finals? You know what I'm saying? He's been to more finals. You know, I, I think it's, a, it's the hate for LeBron. And, and a lot of people, especially in the sports world, I'm, I'll expose anybody. A lot of them, they only give LeBron his just dues. All right, if you don't really believe, if you don't think LeBron number one, cool. I can respect that. But if you ain't saying LeBron James is not in your top five all time, you're a hater. <coughs> a hater. I'm sorry. This shouldn't be a conversation. Because his accomplishments alone, his athleticism alone, his basketball IQ alone, his scoring alone, his defense, his, ape, his ability to guard all positions on the court alone makes LeBron top five ever. If you want to say Kareem Abdul-Jabbar is better than LeBron, cool. I get it. I do. I really do. <laughs> But I want them, I want them just to be like, damn, Bron really just might be the greatest ever, y'all. I said this, him leaving Cleveland. That year he left Cleveland, I said, damn, LeBron might be the greatest player I've ever seen. He's better than Jordan. And don't act, don't keep saying just because I'm young as fuck, I didn't see Jordan. If there's a YouTube, I, I watch this nigga games. Bro. He lost his athleticism. He became a perimeter scorer. This nigga LeBron lost a literally a, a, a like a tiny step. He's not as like fast off the dribble. This nigga LeBron still go to the hole. And he even he's even a better shooter late in his career. What the hell? He's shooting. He's definitely a better shooter than Jordan. Jordan has the mid range, but LeBron shoots better threes. Which one's more important, especially in today's NBA? I want to hear it. I'll wait. Come on, man. When people say KD's up, oh, listen, Kevin Durant is the greatest scorer of all time. He's seven foot tall. He shoots from 40. He can give you 30 every day of the every game he plays. He can give you 30 points. Easy. It's easy for Kevin Durant. And efficient. He'll give you 30 points of 18, 17, 18 shots. Easy. He's not better than LeBron. He's not a, he's not a leader, bro. I've been saying about Kyrie Irving. I love Kyrie, even though he's a bitch ass nigga. His passive aggressiveness is very bitch made. And he be saying a lot of bitch made shit on purpose. He don't take accountability for what he be saying and be twisting his words and be blaming the media. He feel like he got big brothered, nigga. Even though you're younger than LeBron, he, he, he haven't even accomplished 
nearly, you, know, you haven't accomplished a quarter of what LeBron has in his career. But you feel like you 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 wanted same uh the same glorification and the same uh of the Le as LeBron? Nah, bro, it's standards and his levels and shit, dude. But he's a great player. I love Kyrie Irving. I know I just shit on him, but I, lo I love the nigga. But these niggas are not leaders, bro. Like these niggas are not leaders. Like they're great players. They're generational players. They're like top, KD top 10 all time. Kyrie like top 40, 50, 60-ish. But these niggas don't want to lead teams, bro. They don't want to do necessary, the necessary things to be the leaders. They want to score their points, make it look great, and don't take nothing for it, from it at all. Like... Nigga, LeBron can average 40, 10, and 10 in the finals and lose. He's getting blame. He's getting all the blame. Nigga. Jay, LeBron had 51, 8, and 8 in the, in the final. And they, they talking about LeBron didn't react as a leader when JR made the mistake. How about blaming JR Smith for making the mistake? Listen, if LeBron could have had that a little bit better, the, the on-court facial expressions, it was, it was it was petty. I'm not even giving him an excuse for it. But LeBron takes all the heat when Kyrie Irving don't pass the ball. When Kyrie Irving scores 30 points but zero assists in a loss, LeBron got to hear that. LeBron got to take accountability. Nigga, you don't. You never, you never take accountability. In fact, you you deflect from it, nigga. You and KD, y'all are great players, bro. But I can't say these niggas are better than LeBron James. This nigga takes blame even when he's not the reason why of the loss. Every time he still takes the blame. Nigga, shit on LeBron going to Miami. KD didn't see no backlash from the media. <coughs> Low key. I'm not going to lie to y'all, bro. He did not receive backlash like that. He didn't. The media actually was pushing for him to go to Golden State. To a self-made team. LeBron and D-Wade. D-Wade, yeah, he, that was his team. But they, they, they made a team. These niggas never played with each other. He went to a team that was a, a fucking seven seed. This nigga went to a whole team... KD went to a whole team with 73 and 9, bro. But y'all want to say that KD's on LeBron's level? No, it's a gap, bro. It's a gap from KD. Like, it's LeBron, gap, KD, and it's a gap from KD. But, no. Kyrie Irving, bro. You ain't even did enough as KD. At least KD got finals MVPs and MVPs. You be acting like you Kobe Bryant. with Bro, bro, you're not Kobe, man. Even Kobe, in his narcissistic ways, he took accountability, at least. We're we going to see. We're going to see if Kyrie going to be the improvement, the light, the glory to whatever the Nets do or the, or the destruction. Because, let's face it, bro, you've been cancerous and on every team you've been on. And you just came back from a little hiatus you was on for two weeks. You've been doing cool recently, and I respect it. You've been averaging your Kyrie's, Kyrie's averaging twenty eight a game, his career high in his career. He's average. He's shooting fifty percent from the field. He's shooting the career high forty three percent from three. This nigga is a Kyrie's an MVP candidate right now. If the Nets get a first seed, him and him and KD are literally MVP candidates. But his his he he is a destruction. So they have to keep him tamed. The Cavs not doing shit either this year. I hate to say it. I really hate to say it. <laughs> but it's okay. We we building and improving. I wanna I wanna talk to y'all about why 
do I always see black men and black women bash each other every single day on Twitter. And it's a conversation about it every day on Twitter. And I hate seeing it from both sides, both sides. I'm not about to be one side and say, I just hate seeing black women bash men, even though they don't act like it happens. But I don't wanna see niggas doing it either. I hate seeing niggas just bash black women, w women in general, women in general, but especially black women. When niggas really do with black women, that's that's gay to me. That's 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 not cool. Cause you ain't doing it with these other motherfuckers who don't care about you. And I don't like when when women be bashing men, black men. But it's, it's just a conversation you see every single day on social media. And it's just like, at some point, where where is the, the stopping point? Where is the, the time where it's like, okay, if we're not talking about solutions on how we can understand each other, then like, what is the war? What does what, what this war keep going on like? And I feel like social media be trying to push agendas to, you know, separate the black men and women in various ways. You know, social media is becoming another way where, you know, we be seeing the destruction of black men and women because we're trying to just tear down each other in multiple ways. Like, it's multiple ways we be seeing the, you know, the bashings, the back and forth confrontations, you know, ongoing arguments online, you know, tweets about, you know, what such and such don't do, you know, people worrying about people's body counts and things of that nature. And hopefully it gets to a point where like that, that type of shit's not even discussed, that's not even thought about in a negative light. People will be speaking on these negatives, this negative shit, man. That's why I'll, and there'll be no peace, man. Motherfuckers like me, man, I'm looking for peace. I'm looking for um, stability. I want stability. I want comfort. I'm not looking for drama. I'm not looking for negativity. It's just crazy because it's all around. And it's easier said than done. And gee, yeah, just don't be don't be around it. But, you know, this is until you can make a way out of it, this is where you at. You gotta survive in it. So as long as you, and then you have to survive in it. You gonna have to do certain things and not even indulge in it or see it or, you know. That's why a lot of things, a lot of tweets on Twitter. Follow me on Twitter, Rob One Two Seven. Um, I'm starting to. I'm really starting to not comment on certain tweets on any subject, any topic because you know. People gonna really want to believe what they want to believe. They stance is what they stance is, and you gotta respect it to a certain extent. But no, you gotta respect it 100. percent But at the same time, is it really worth the energy that you putting out just to have that confrontation? I don't think so. So it's just knowing how to pick your battles. And like just the back and forth, you know, a lot of people don't know how to really talk on Twitter. You know, people say things and a lot of people take it out of context. You know, it's hard to have a real dialogue on social media because the tone, you can't hear the other person's tone and how they're saying these things. So it's really going to be <clears throat> taken out of context. It's 1.17 a.m. We live in this bitch. <laughs> Shout out to all my viewership. Shout out to um, all my listeners. You know, we only getting better, y'all. You know, we're going we gonna to push for better. We're going to strive for better. We're going to be better, you know. That's what I'm looking to push. More positivity. More positive content. More positive vibes, man. We need that. We really need that out here, you know. A lot of people going through real shit, real life, real life shit. You know, and they need that space and they, they need that environment to, and they need that mindset just to keep, keep it up, keep positive, you know, keep pushing. 
So if I gotta be that, I'm on that. You can follow the Instagram page, the Lost Ones Podcast. We got 35 minutes. I'm fucking with that. Um, subscribe to whatever you're viewing or where you're listening to the Lost Ones Podcast. Um, make sure you subscribe to the Lost Ones Podcast YouTube channel and follow the Lost Ones Podcast Instagram page. This is your boy Rob Glow. Till we see you till the next time. Peace.